Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. This is the second session of the April 2021 series and in this very series we try to pick up some important financial news, some RBI notifications, master directions and we try to discuss these finance currents with the help of some important questions. So without wasting any time, let's just move on to question number one but before that, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications you can also join our telegram group wherein we share some free quizzes as well as all the updations for our latest videos so let's move on to question number one so this question says that rbi has decided to set up a regulations review authority for a period of one year starting from may 1st 2021 which of the following statements correctly states the rationale behind the setting up of this authority? So recently, RBI has come up with this decision of setting up a authority, RRA 2.0. So let us first discuss what are some of the major objectives behind setting up of this authority and then we'll move back to the question, read these statements and try to answer it. So RBI has decided to set up this authority for one year starting from 1st of May 2021. So what is the basic purpose of setting up of this authority? From the very name, it is clear that this authority focuses on reviewing the regulations. So we all know RBI regulates our Indian banking system. Okay, so RBI has different rules and regulations governing different bodies in our Indian economy. So we have to make sure that these regulations are properly in place and they are working efficiently. So this committee has or this authority has been formed to review the regulations of RBI. RBI. A timely review is needed to make sure that whatever gaps are existing in the existing regulations, we can improve on that. We can simplify the procedures and make them even more efficient. So let us just look at some of the major objectives behind setting up of this authority. So one of the major reasons is to review the RBI's regulations and the compliance procedures, thereby streamlining and rationalizing them. We need to improve and make these existing regulations more effective. So for that, we first need to review all the regulations, review all the compliance procedures which are there in practice. Ek bar hum sari regulations ko fir se review karenge, dekhenge ki how they are functioning, then only we'll be able to streamline them in a proper direction so we have to focus on making the existing regulations more effective because of which a review is needed secondly the focus will be on simplifying the things on making sure that the implementation eases out of various RBI regulations so there are various rules and regulations which are there in practice we have to make sure that somehow we can simplify these regulations Jab jitni zada easy hongi regulations to implement then larger masses of the society will be able to implement it. Agar regulation simple hai, if it is easier for banks to understand, then they can obviously easily implement them. So we need to make sure that how can we simplify the regulations? How can we make their implementation even easier? So that is the basic idea or basic objective behind reviewing the regulations so that we can improve the regulations, we can simplify them. So streamlining the regulatory instructions, reducing the compliance burden will help simplify the procedures and reduce reporting requirements wherever possible. The more there will be, the more the regulations are there, the more difficult or complex they are, the more will be the difficulty not only for all the banks who have to implement them, but for the RBI as well. Jitni zada mushkil hongi aapki requirements, utna banks ke liye implement karna mushkil hoga. And it will be difficult for RBI to make sure that the banks are adhering to those norms. So that is the reason we need to reduce the compliance burden. We need to simplify the things. Okay, so making the regulatory and supervisory instructions more effective is the basic idea behind this review. So, jaha pe bhi redundancy hai, duplications hai, there are different regulations which one has to follow. So, at times these regulations overlap with each other. So, we need to make sure that all such duplications can be removed so that the procedure becomes more efficient. 
Moreover, moreover, we need to ease out the reporting mechanisms by revoking the obsolete instructions. So there are certain regulations which are not very apt for the current scenario for the current business environment. So we need to remove those unnecessary instructions or unnecessary regulations which if are existing. So we need to first review are there any such regulations which are of no use in the present environment if it is so then we need to remove them. Okay so simplifying the procedures and enhancing the ease of compliance is one of the major objectives of this authority. Moreover, we'll examine and suggest how we can improve the dissemination process of circulars, of instructions, of updation of website. Now the things have got more online. Every now and then we have some or the other notification or press release coming up on the RBI website. At times the things are really very complex for the banks or the, for the normal people to understand. So we need to make sure that how can, so we need to make sure and review these things and we need to make sure that we simply Simplify the way the information is provided through RBI circulars. Make sure that timely information is provided. So, her cheese ka review kiya jayega ki kaise existing regulations ko jitna ho sake utna zada improve kiya jaye. The more the, the more we'll uh, review and make sure that the things become more simpler, the more easier it will be to implement them. So that is the objective of this authority. Now this authority has been appointed with uh, the uh, with Mr. Rajeshwar Rao, the deputy governor as its head. So he is going to head this authority and as I have mentioned, it has been framed for a time period of one year. Now why it, is it called RRA 2.0? and not only RRA. The reason is that we already had one such authority. One such authority was set up in the year 1999. So the objectives of that authority were also similar. That was to review the regulations, the reporting systems, to simplify them. Okay, so that we can reduce the reporting, bur reporting burden and make the things more effective. So because there was already one authority which was set up earlier, we call this uh, one as RRA 2 because it has been set up second time. Now let's move back to our question. So they asked about the statements which correctly states the rationale. So the first statement says it will make the regulations of bank more stricter in order to ensure effectiveness of banking system. I just discussed all of the objectives. Nowhere it was mentioned that the focus is on making regulations stricter. In fact, the focus was on making them more simpler so that they become easy. It becomes easy to implement them. So this is not an objective for sure. The second one says it will focus on simplification and ease of implementation of various RBI regulations. This is the main purpose behind the review to be carried out. The third one says it will focus on making regulatory and supervisory instructions more effective by removing the redundancy, the duplication. So this was again one of the objectives I just discussed. Last one says it is likely to streamline the regulatory instructions. A proper way may guide karegi ki hume kaise directions follow karne hai, kya regulations follow karne hai. So it will streamline all the reg regulatory instructions, removing the unnecessary things and simplifying the existing procedures. So the answer to this question is that the statement second, third and fourth are correct. That is option D. Now let's move on to question number two. So this is the second question which says the RBI on April 15 released names of eight applicants seeking dash licensing of universal banks and small finance banks in the private sector. So they are talking about licensing. This licensing would mean RBI will accept applications and grant the license for banks throughout the year. So we have to identify the kind of licensing which has been mentioned in this question. So the second statement is the hint over here. This is the hint which talks about a type of licensing where RBI grants the license throughout the year. So what do we call such kind of licensing? The answer to this question is option D that is on tap licensing. So let's just discuss what is this on tap licensing. So first of all, recently, uh, if you visit the RBI website, you will see a list of eight, eight 
entities which has which have applied for getting the license so they have applied to get the license of universal bank and that of the small finance bank so this is the list of those eight banks you don't need to remember these names it's just for information that i have added them in this slide okay there are numerous entities which apply for license to be uh, to be able to function as banks so rbi ko bahut sare banks bahut sari applications aati hain alag alag entities ki to grant them the license of bank so these are eight such applications which rbi has received recently so they are asking for on tap licensing okay now these applications are going to be reviewed by a committee under shamla gopinath so shamla gopinath committee is the committee which will review their applications so what is this on tap licensing through which these banks or these entities have applied to become universal banks or the small finance banks so if i talk about on tap licensing on tap licensing is a facility where licenses are provided throughout the year what used to happen earlier earlier rbi used to provide a window a time frame within which the licenses for becoming banks were accepted jo bhi entities us time period ke beech licenses ke liye apply karengi only they were granted the license so there was a fixed time period within which the license for uh, the uh, applications for licensing were accepted so this what happened under the on tap policy it allowed the banks to apply for uh, these licenses licensing throughout the year so pura year ye window open rehti hai jab aap chaho aap license ke liye apply kar sakte ho so the policy allows the aspirants to apply for universal bank or the small finance bank license at any time subject to fulfillment of certain conditions obviously there are certain requirements which need to be complied with you need certain shareholding you need to fulfill the criteria for promoters and many other things so there are specific guidelines to obtain the license so on tap licensing would mean that rbi will accept the applications and grant the license throughout the year okay so this is a facility open throughout the year now let's talk a bit about the small finance banks and universal banks so these are two banks about which it has been mentioned so let's discuss a bit about it so what are small finance banks they are like other banks which help in promoting the objective of financial inclusion so they help some underserved or unserved sections of society they carry out various banking businesses like accepting the deposits lending providing the necessary lending okay then if i talk about universal banks there are banks which offer numerous services all together numerous financial services all together they offer the mutual funds the basic commercial banking services factoring credit cards retail loans housing finance investment banking insurance and what not so the banks are universal that is they universally provide numerous financial services that's why they have been named as universal banks if i talk about uh, icici it's a universal bank because it's offering all these services now rbi has released the guidelines for on tap licensing for these universal banks and small finance banks what used to happen as i have already told earlier the facility was open for certain time frame only now in 2016 it is uh, the on tap licensing facility came up for the universal banks so in 2016 Uh, the on tap facility was open for universal banks and then in 2019 it was open for the small finance banks matlab ye banks ab on tap licenses obtain kar sakte hain so this was the basic idea behind on tap licensing so the answer to this question is option d now let's move on to question number 3 So this question says that the inflation rate based on wholesale price index shot up 7.39% in March 2021 which is the highest reading in 8 years so WPI reached its highest its peak point in past 8 years a wholesale price index is an index that measures and tracks the change in prices of goods in the stages before the retail level so here they are talking about what is wpi there are more than 600 items which are covered under wpi which of the following cannot be included under wpi so let's first discuss what is wpi and then we'll answer this question 
so what has happened recently wpi has reached its maximum limit or the maximum point it has reached if we compare it with past 8 years so what is this wpi wpi stands for the wholesale price index what is it it is basically an index which tracks the prices of goods okay so it uh, uh, basically tracks the prices of goods which are before the retail level the prices at which the goods are exchanged between different businesses that price level is known as wpi so it refers to the goods that are sold in bulk and traded between entities and not between consumers for example a wholesaler sells to a retailer so the it he sells at certain price okay then there are numerous wholesalers who are selling to numerous retailers at certain price so that price level is wpi it measures the changes in price of goods which are traded in bulk by wholesale or other businesses so yahan pe jo bhi aapke factory level ke prices hai mandi level ke prices hai wholesale prices hai उसका ये एक इंडेक्स है हेयर वी डोंट कंसिडर द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉज द टैक्सेस द मार्जिन ऑफ द रिटेलर्स विच आर इंक्लूडेड इन सी पी आई सो वॉट इज दिस सी पी आई सी पी आई कैन ऑल्सो बी कॉल्ड एज द रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन सो इट इज द प्राइस लेवल एट विच द गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस आर एक्सचेंज अमंग द कंज्यूमर्स बिटवीन द कंज्यूमर्स जिस प्राइस लेवल पे कस्टमर्स को चीजें सेल होती हैं उस प्राइस लेवल का इंडेक्स इज सी पी आई नाउ द मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन डब्ल्यू पी आई एंड सी पी आई इज दिस ओनली दैट डब्ल्यू पी आई इज द प्राइस लेवल फॉर होल सेलर्स एंड सी पी आई इज द प्राइस लेवल एट विच द गुड्स आर परचेज बाय कंज्यूमर्स मोर ओवर डब्ल्यू पी आई इज ओनली रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू गुड्स हम गुड्स का ही डब्ल्यू पी आई निकालते हैं सी पी आई इज फॉर बोथ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज सो दिस इज द की पॉइंट विच विल हेल्प यू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन ना बिफोर मूविंग ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन लेट्स डिस्कस अ बिट अबाउट द डब्ल्यू पी आई राइजिंग If I talk about RBI, then RBI used to use WPI for its policy making, for its monetary policy formulation. It keeps a check on inflation. So, पहले RBI WPI का use करता था. If you talk it about it now, RBI considers CPI and not WPI. But because RBI considers CPI, does not mean that it will completely ignore WPI. Ultimately, WPI is going to get reflected in the CPI also. So, okay, उसके इफेक्ट जो है वो सीपीआई तक पहुंच जाएंगे दैट्स वाई आरबीआई कैनोट इग्नोर दिस राइजिंग डब्ल्यू पी आई सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द मेजर कॉम्पोनेट ऑफ डब्ल्यू पी आई वी कैन हैव सम फूड आर्टिकल्स अंडर इट एंड सम नॉन फूड आर्टिकल्स अंडर इट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट फूड आर्टिकल्स वी कैन हैव डिफरेंट सीरियल्स वीट पल्सेस फ्रूट वेजिटेबल्स and if i talk about non food articles we can have different minerals crude oil we can have fuel power we can have different manufactured goods like we can make use of metal cement plastic so in sab cheezon ka aap uh, in sab items ko aap wpi mein record karte ho these are the things which are part or the components of wpi as i've already told you services are not included under wpi so what led to this rise in wpi i just mentioned that 7.39% increase has been there in wpi so what's the reason for the same the major reason is the non food articles non food articles ki wajah se wpi bada hai so the major reason is the fuel prices fuel prices have risen a lot okay crude oil prices have risen petrol products have risen basic metal ke jo prices hain they have also risen now these basic metals and such things are used in making the manufactured products they are the inputs so if, if inke prices badhenge obviously manufactured goods ke prices badhenge दस फ्यूल एंड मैन्युफैक्चर्ड प्रोडक्ट्स ये दो मेजर रीजन है बिहाइंड दी राइज इन डब्ल्यू पी आई और राइट नाउ इफ यू कंपेयर डब्ल्यू पी आई ऑफ दिस ईयर बेसिकली इफ आई कंपेयर इट दी यू पी आई ऑफ दिस ईयर एंड द प्रीवियस ईयर इन प्रीवियस ईयर द बेस वॉज लो ओके द सिचुएशन वॉज नॉट दैट वेरी गुड कोविड जस्ट बिगैन सो द बेस वॉज लो अर्यर सो इफ वी कंपेयर दिस ईयर डब्ल्यू पी आई विद द प्रीवियस ईयर वन ऑब्वियसली वील सी अ मेजर राइज इन इट सो दैट इज द रीजन वाई डब्ल्यू पी आई हैज रिजन दिस ईयर now what does it mean for our rbi what kind of implications does does it have for rbi 
एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया मेजरली यूज सी पी आई फॉर इट्स पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन ओके बट स्टिल इट कैन नॉट इग्नोर डब्ल्यू पी आई ओके दिस राइजिंग डब्ल्यू पी आई कैन ऑब्वियसली पोज अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर आर बी आई यू मस्ट बी अवेयर दैट कोविड इज प्रिवेलिंग सो आर बी आई इज ट्राइंग टू प्रोवाइड मोर लिक्विडिटी इन द इकोनॉमी इट इज फॉलोइंग अ मोर लिबरल काइंड ऑफ अ पॉलिसी एंड अकोमोडेटिव स्टैंड ओके बट इफ दिस इन्फ्लेशन कंटिन्यूज टू इंक्रीज अगर ये इन्फ्लेशन होती रहेगी देन ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर आर बी आई टू कंट्रोल इन्फ्लेशन आर बी आई नीड टू हैव अ स्ट्रिक्टर पॉलिसी बट बिकॉज ऑफ पैंडमिक इट वॉन्ट्स टू हैव अ लिबरल पॉलिसी सो देयर विल बी अ क्लैश अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दैट वॉट काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी शुड आर बी आई फॉलो सो आर बी आई विल फेस अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम दैट्स द रीजन वाई वी नीड टू मेक श्योर that somehow this inflation gets targeted that doesn't increase beyond certain target levels now if i move back to the question it asks that which of which of the following are not part of wpi i just mentioned services will not be included under wpi so metals are goods machinery are goods they can be included education and communication are services transportation education communication medical care so all these can't be included under the uh, wpi so the answer to this question should be option d that is second and fourth now let's move on to the fourth question this is question number 4 it says nbfcs have requested the reserve bank of india to extend one time restructuring scheme of msmes what to what should be extended the one time restructuring scheme of msme that is the msme recast scheme okay and it should be extended till 31st march 2022 this request has been made by nbfcs to rbi why they have made such a request the reason is that they are unable to revive their businesses due to the second wave of covid so which of the following conditions play a important role in permitting one time restructuring of existing loans to msmes without downgrading their asset classification so here they have mentioned three conditions so which of the conditions are correct with respect to getting the one time restructuring permit so let's first discuss what is this one time restructuring scheme now if i talk about msmes msmes are very uh, play very important role for our economy they generate the employment they contribute to the gdp so we need to cater to their needs as well so if we consider the importance of these msmes uh, there was a need to come up with one time restructuring of loans स्कीम फॉर एम एस एम ईज जब आपका जी एस टी आया था वेन द जी एस टी वॉज इम्प्लीमेंटेड वेन डी मोनिटाइजेशन हैपन्ड एम एस एम ईज फेस्ड प्रॉब्लम सो द ट्रांजेक्शन वॉज नॉट दैट वेरी स्मूथ फॉर दैम सो इन ऑर्डर टू मेक द थिंग्स स्मूदर दिस रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग स्कीम गेम अप वॉट इज रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग सपोज यू हैव टेकन अ लोन यू आर नॉट एबल टू रीपे बैक द लोन सो इट वुड बी वेरी गुड इफ सम काइंड ऑफ रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग हैपन्स एंड यू गेट अ मोर वाइडर टाइम पीरियड टू पे बैक दोज लोन्स you get more time period to pay the emis okay the emi amount changes or emi timing changes ya jo interest aapko pay karna tha that interest rate changes so this is restructuring change in the loan pattern the way you will pay the loan back how much amount you will pay back what interest amount should be pay when you change the terms and conditions that is known as restructuring so a uh, basically a guidelines came up for the restructuring of loan loans which were given to these msmes now you all know that if some loans have been granted and th those loans are not repaid within 90 days then we call them as npas but if they are good loans they are paid on time we call them standard assets okay jab tak un pe koi delay nahi hai timely wo pay ho rahe hain they are standard assets now they are standard assets and once uh, they uh, cross the threshold of 90 days they become npa under npa documents in your course we have already covered that npa further can be some substandard loss assets okay so that's the further bifurcation for now you have to understand that the good loans are the standard assets so the loans which were standard as on jan 1 2019 
they were permitted for one time restructuring okay so those loans won't be downgraded and a restructuring would be provided on those loans jo loans first march 2019 tak standard loans the standard assets the they were not classified as npas okay उनको डाउनग्रेड नहीं किया जाएगा उन्हें सब स्टैंडर्ड असेट्स या एनपीए नहीं बनाया जाएगा एंड उन पर वन टाइम रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग अलाउ कर दी जाएगी दैट इज सम रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग ऑफ सच लोन्स वुड बी अलाउड नाउ इट्स नॉट दैट देर अलाउ एनी एमएसएमई टू गो फॉर रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग three conditions were specified for the same so the first condition was that whatever loans have been given to the borrowers to those msmes okay by any bank any nbfc that aggregate amount should not exceed 25 crores so is borrower ko alag alag jagah se jitne bhi loans mile hain the combined amount should not exceed 25 crores if it is so then your loans can get restructured second condition was that the borrower's account is in default borrower ka account default mein to hai but it is still a standard asset as on jan 1 2019 and it continues to be classified as standard asset till implementation of restructuring so aapka jo bhi amount hai wo although default mein hai but it has not yet been classified as nps it is still a standard asset okay this is the second condition the third condition was that the borrowing entity is gst registered however there were certain msmes jo gst ke purview mein nahi aati hain they are exempt so for them there is an exception that this condition will not apply otherwise the borrowing entity registered under gst can only go for restructuring so this scheme was planned and it was to be implemented till 31st march 2020 but what happened this scheme was extended till 31st december 2020 to kya changes kiye gaye ye jo dates thi yahan 2019 ki jagah 2020 kar diya gaya inka time limit bada ke and this was to be implemented earlier till 31st march 2020 now it was extended to 31st december 2020 20 now the thing uh, comes up is that these nbfcs are demanding that uh, to further extend the scheme till 31st march next year wo use aur badhane ko keh rahe hain because of the covid 19 covid 19 situation iski second wave aa gayi hai and then thus they are demanding this it's not just that these msme these nbfcs are demanding this but they are having other demands as well like these msm these nbfcs are saying that uh, make us in the uh, basically make us a priority le sector lending sector एज फार एज लोन टू एम एस एम ईज आर कंसर्न जो हम एम एस एम ईज को लोन देते हैं उनको आप प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग में डाल दो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट नाउ टिल नाउ टिल सेप्टेम्बर दीज लोन टू एम एस एम ईज आर कंसिडर्ड एज प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग एंड दीज एन बी एफ सीज आर आस्किंग की इसको आप परमानेंट बेसिस पे कर दो कि जो भी लोन हम एम एस एम ई को देते हैं उन्हें प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग के अंडर आप कवर करो सो कवर दीज लोन्स टू एम एस एम ईज आर ऑन परमानेंट बेसिस अंडर प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग इफ यू विल कम अंडर प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग ऑब्वियसली यू विल गेट सम लो रेट लो इंटरेस्ट रेट लोन विच यू कैन प्रोवाइड टू दीज एम एस एम ईज सो दैट्स वाई दे आर डिमांडिंग दिस अदर देन दैट इफ आई सेपरेटली टॉक अबाउट एम एस एम ई सेक्टर ओनली दे आर ऑल्सो डिमांडिंग सम रिलैक्सेशन इन वन एरिया और दी अदर सो बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड द सिचुएशन हैव बिकम वर्स एंड दी एन बी एफ सीज दी एम एस एम ई and other sectors are demanding as much relaxations as much as possible so now just let's just read this question we had to identify the correct conditions okay so the first condition is if exposure of banks and nbfcs to borrower does not exceed 25 crore on 20 on jan 1 2020 this statement is correct the second one says the borrower's account was in default and declared npa no it was in default but should not be declared npa it should be a standard asset so this statement is wrong okay second statement is wrong the third one says the borrowing entity is gst registered on date of implementation of restructuring however it will not apply to msme exempt from gst this condition is correct so we had to identify the correct ones only first and third are correct that is why answer is option c 
so this was all for today's session i hope the things are clear i hope the session was useful for you all so with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much